in which the world's biggest Heihachi fan is excited to play him for the first time. For real this time. But no, seriously, um, I've loved this crotchety old man since way back in the Tekken 2 days. All the way up through, you know, Tekken 7, and then Tekken 8 rolls around, Heihachi Mishima, completely dead. Uh, we get Reina, who ends up, you know, doing a lot of Heihachi's moves, with the Mishima Ryu Karate. So, basically, nobody really saw this coming. And that made it all more sweeter. I would have liked to have done a real live reaction trailer thing for this, but it would have just resulted in me screaming and crying and karate chopping my desk in half out of excitement. But now I'm actually able to put, you know, words to this. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this bit by bit and see what's up. Story of the, uh, the Mishimas again. Love of the Zaibatsu everywhere, and then it turns to this. We're currently getting like extreme Mortal Kombat vibes from this, and it only like ramps up as the trailer goes on. So let's take a look. Oh, this stage was gorgeous, by the way. I, I, you can you can see the walls in the background. I need to stage expeditiously. <laughs> the wave dashes are great. The guy doing the wave dash in the burning fire logs is actually just peak entertainment. Guys jumping around, hanging around doing the training, balance training. That that's me trying to do an electric when the round starts. Round one, fight. Minus ten. So these guys are the Tekken monks, and they're apparently just some kind of hit squad. This part, this actually turns into like a more details about the, the story trailer that's been announced coming in the fall. And so we see the Rebel Hanger, we got Lars here, and Eddie and Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu actually, let's, let's go back slightly. So Eddie has been trying to hunt down Kazuya for you know, a million years now because Kazuya was supposedly responsible for his father's death, all this stuff. So Eddie finally pulls up on Kazuya and he gets stomped out. And so, you know, Kazuya's about to do what he does and wipe him off the face of the planet. Yoshimitsu comes out of nowhere, rescues him, and now they are going to meet up with Lars. Speaking of which, um, these two fought in Tekken Six, I believe. And uh, because Eddie was working for Jin at the time, and Lars was, you know, trying to stop World War Three, and so they fought. Eddie lost, by the way. Uh, you'll see that as a recurring theme here. This shot goes hard. He has honed his body and technique exquisitely. Yet his mind is his mind is wavering, causing an imbalance in mind, body, and technique. But you see, like if you're familiar with Street Fighter VI and the recent Bison DLC, it's basically the exact same thing. Where Bison pulls up and he's like, "I don't know what's going on," but y'all seem to y'all seem to know what's going on. So yeah, I'll, I'll be in Bison, and then he just goes out and stomps everybody out. But this is apparently Heihachi showing up and something is off. Remember that, we'll get back to that in a second. So here, 
Whoa, come here, you. We've got, apparently, Lydia pulls up with Eddie and Yoshi on a super secret mission to go to the secluded training ground. And you see the, the Tekken monks in the background. Reina, it's almost time. We don't know what, we don't know what reina has been up to this entire time. Like, the entire base Tekken 8 story was basically Reina going, Ooh, I'm here. Let me tag along with you guys and see what's up. And, like, at the very end, we find out she finally activates the Devil Gene, which we thought was, like, the whole point of it. But apparently there's more. And here we go. It's almost time. Time for what? You see that? If you've ever watched uh, Ronin Warriors, you remember the ancient one? That's the, that's the only thing I can ever think of whenever I see a staff like that. The ancient one went hard, by the way. Love that show. We see a blood moon. Nothing, nothing good in the history of anything ever <laughs> has happened under a blood moon. The worst case scenario, you know, We've had a few recent ones being, what, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. You know, everything gets powered up, blah, blah, blah. But, like, the worst case scenario for a blood moon, non-basic lands or mountains. So, Eddie gets in a fight. The Tekken monks are on the move. This, we've seen already, technically, because Nina and Eddie have... Uh, they have you know a, char a special character interaction where Nina pulls up, pulls out the gun, bang bang bang. Uh, Eddie dodges. He tries to hit her with a kick, misses. Round starts. And oh, he also says, "Looks like you're as merciless as ever." But um, the connection here basically is for whatever you know. Eddie and G Corporation, I guess we'll put it for lack of a better terminology, have always been fighting. Eddie being a part of the mission with Zaibatsu for a couple of games between like what Tekken 5 and Tekken 6 before he tried to get out in like Tekken 7. Like that's always been a thing is just him versus G Corp. And Nina is basically because he's right hand at this point. So them two fighting completely makes sense so here we see Lydia inside the training ground and you'll see that there's black smoke and stuff starting to envelop the room again nothing good ever comes out of a blood moon the masked man starts on Mask himself. And you get a glimpse of the mustache. Oh, that famous, glorious, big, beautiful mustache. And you see a picture of Lydia with her father, which we can assume that Heihachi probably did something and, you know, obliterated him, because of course he did, because the mission was always do something to people. The monks. Oh, look! Jacks are angry, and they're all carrying bombs. This is a recurring theme, by the way, <laughs> in the Tekken series. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. We see if you break two walls in a secluded training ground, you see this shadowy figure in the back. It's him. It's him with his hair down. That is a very sick change because, you know, obviously, if you give him the this, oh, that's obviously Heihachi, but you let his hair down, which is like, what, the first time ever in this series, and it's like, he gets a whole new look and it's just... chef's kiss. Fight. Jacks blow up, which, again... <sighs> <sighs> okay, 
let's go back to Tekken 4, right? Uh, in the canon storyline ending, uh, Tekken 4, Kazuya and Heihachi are about to fight because, of course they are, that's what they do in their life, and they get jumped by a bunch of jacks. So, for approximately, like, 2 minutes and 47 seconds, they team up in a fight for survival. Eventually, Kazuya's like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I got this. And so he grabs Hihachi by the head and throws him into a pile of jacks and just pieces out. And so the jacks pile on top of Hihachi. One of them actually does an elbow drop. It's really funny. And then this last jack shows up. And it turns out this jack is actually a bomb because his face opens up and you see a timer countdown. And he's like, NANI? And then everything blows up. We'll come back to that in a second. So it looks like all the Tekken monks are dead. Crying shame. And this is the precipice of fate. And there he is. That cocky smile. Yep. The flashbacks. The glorious flashbacks. The patricide fist. The King of Iron Fist Resurrection. We will also come back to this. It's all going to tie together in just a second. So. Remember what I was talking about uh, Tekken 4? Technically, that's the intro to Tekken 5, where Heihachi Mishima gets blown up by a bunch of jacks, and he's actually just straight up missing. So technically, Heihachi wasn't even in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 5, even though he's a playable character and all that. Like He was literally just buried under a pile of rubble for like two weeks. He might. He might. He might. Is dead. Yeah. Um. About that, by the way. Uh. This is the the end of Tekken Seven, where basically Raven, Lars, and Alisa, and that NPC that they had, were watching the the fight between Kazuya and Hachi go down a precipice of fate. So they they saw the patricide fist. They saw Kazuya pick up. Heihachi's lifeless body, and throw him into the volcano. So Heihachi, so Raven, again, is like, Heihachi Mishima is dead. Now... Raven, tu as besoin d'une leçon. Victor says, Raven, you're an idiot. <laughs> Rule number one, you always give him the double tap. Always. Heihachi Mishima is... Completely dead. <laughs> Even Harada, Hiachi Mishima is completely dead. And yet we see him here. Here's the thing though. I don't think that Harada lied at all. The the going theory is that Reina's entire purpose was basically to cast this resurrection spell to bring Heihachi back. And so, you know, if Heihachi was completely dead, and then this blood moon thing goes down, and then suddenly he comes back, it makes a lot of sense. Also, if we go back to that point in the trailer where we were talking about how Heihachi has trained his body and technique extensively so this person here who you know does uh demon's breath he does combo into omen like this is heihachi however something probably went wrong the mind is wavering 
causing an imbalance in mind, body, and technique. So something isn't quite right. So this isn't actually 100%. You know what? Screw you guys. I didn't actually die, Heihachi. This is Heihachi with the power of magic, except Reina isn't actually alive since resurrection therapy, uh, specialist. I almost said therapist. Wow. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in storyline terms. But none of that actually matters because we get to dispense meds. And I am so excited to finally be able to tackle learning Heihachi. Now that I actually know how fighting games work, I know how Tekken works. I can actually like explore the character as he was meant to be in this game. And I am more than ready for that. Is it autumn yet? 